Back on TYT Sports, Francis Maxwell, Jason Rubin. Copa America. Reading. Centenario. Are you reading? I'm reading. Reading up on Copa America in the United States. We have done some Euro clips, and as we uh, said to you guys, we like to stand by our word, and we are bringing you some Copa America previews. So, Jason, who's going to win it? Uh, win it? Hold on. On the spot. No research. Who? Chile. Good call. Not bad call. Will they go back to Well, they just they just or? won last year. They looked the best, and if they play like they did, uh, Colombia is another uh, big one to take it, obviously. The U.S. men's national team will not win it, but I'd like to see him make a run. And then there's this guy named Luis Suarez who's playing the best football of his goddamn life, <laughs> and he plays for a team called Uruguay. And Uruguay, even though it's not the United States of America, uh, obviously could threaten for a Copa America run just because Suarez is that freaking good. Yes. Uh, oh, and there's... Sure, Argentina's good too. Obviously, there's a lot of good teams in the Copa America Centenario, but this is not about the teams, France. This is about the players. Yes, it's very true. It is about the players who's going to sculpt uh, each team, and that's what we're going to look into here. But, of course, we're going to talk about who we think are going to win it. So, Group A, we'll start with the groups. United States, the United States of America, Colombia, Costa Rica, Paraguay. They had to throw someone in there to watch. Yes, like, for of each course. Team, every team, every player. This is coming from where? The big lead. The big lead, um, has, um, the big lead has Christian Pulisic as the player to watch already in the U.S. And if that doesn't already um, enlighten you to how desperate the U.S. is, it, it, their quest for stardom, then nothing else will. Like, they have talented players in that team. He's Don't 17. He's 17 years of age. <laughs> what, he can't, buy, learn from he can't buy porn in this country. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you That's who we're putting all our eggs into, is Christian Pulisic. <laughs> yeah. So he's American. Uh, he's in the... He plays, obviously, his football in British Dortmund. Very promising. Looks very talented. Um, Dortmund have matured him very well. They've allowed him to play not as many games as many people would have thought, but they don't believe in the whole Freddie Adu effect of literally throwing him into the deep end with no paddle he's and a pull to try and save 17. himself. I'm just going to skip right to the guy below him. Yes. That's Jaimes Rodriguez because he's obviously a player to watch. And obviously on the national stage, uh, I would say the World Cup, which is still, I can't believe, two years ago. 2014 World Cup, he had the goal of the cup, which was unbelievable. Oh, my God. Remember that goal? It was unbelievable. Um, and, of course, for Colombia in the uh, uh, Copa America last year, last summer, which I still can't believe, right another Copa America. Um, Colombia's counterattacking style of play is really, like, the most fun thing ever. Yes. So, obviously, Colombia, not just Jaime Rodriguez, the whole team. Watch the whole team. The team's fun to watch. Yes, they're a very fun team to watch. And, of course, without uh, the reliance on Falcao, the, the man that was and never will be again. <laughs> um, I think that you're going to see a lot more from James Rodriguez, Cuadrado. Uh, they've got a talented squad. Uh, are they going to be the same significant forces as we've seen in the World Cup? Not for me. No. I, don't th I think James is dipping form. He's not as consistent at Real fair. Madrid. I think he will. Uh, he's allowed to be the bride at Colombia. Therefore, I think he will thrive more so and, and be, be the significant factor in getting them through the group because I do believe they will get through the group. The team to watch in this group, definitely for me, is Paraguay. So, uh, Juan Iturbe, who plays up top, um, he moved to Roma, $25 million uh, move um, as a 20-year-old a couple of years ago. He is a interesting player to watch out for. He has done good things at Roma, but he's talented in amongst a talented Paraguay squad who should not be overlooked. This is why many people thought it was a group of death. Yes, you didn't get the Argentina or the Chile straight away, but you have three teams that I would say have as much to, to lose in this competition as Brazil and Argentina. Brazil aren't even taking Neymar, so obviously they're not as looking as serious as, it much, as, as they should be with Neymar on reserve for the Olympics. So that tells you a massive story there. You, you don't see James sitting this one out. You don't see uh, Kayla Navas sitting this one out. The teams that are in the group with the US are going to make it very tough for them. And then the last player is someone who is the most significant player to their team in comparison to anyone. More significant than Messi is to Argentina. More significant than James is to Colombia. And that's Kayla Navas to Costa Rica. Oh, yeah, He is a sure. phenomenal goalkeeper. If it wasn't for David De Gea or Manuel Neuer, even some people will, will argue, um, yes, Real Madrid went on to achieve better things. I think that De Gea, good goalkeepers will be able to, to take their team from a, a, a dismal season to a respectable season, which David De Gea has done. Kellen Navas has done very well at Real Madrid this season. Stepped into the massive shoes of Casilla and just went. And was going to be replaced by De Gea. He was going to be replaced for by De Gea. six months. They were yes. like his. He knew his job was out, and then he had no choice to play, uh, and he couldn't get out of there either. And he, I mean, he's starting in the Champions League final. Yes, he he is going to be a significant player in this tournament. Costa Rica had a fantastic World Cup, as we remember. Um, they relied on a lot of young players. We had Joe Campbell, who played his. Football this season at Arsenal. 
and they were an exciting team to watch in the World Cup. But they capitalised on the how lackadaisical certain teams were in the World Cup. They capitalised on that. They capitalised on the fact that Italy were just not there to take the competition as serious as they should have and didn't mm. have the quality. And I don't think they'll be able to do so in this. Their, their form since the World Cup hasn't measured up to that. But I think that they will still have a chance. I think that anyone can qualify from this group along with Colombia. That's why I think the US has a good chance as well, seeing that they're being on home soil. But we've got to move through because we'll be here forever. To, and we're going to just mention a couple of players in this group. But they're basically, um, the big lead have Hulk as Brazil's player to watch. And that will tell you all you need to know about Brazil. That Hulk, Hulk has become the player to watch. Hulk has become the player to watch. He's humongous. Dude, look at his leg, dude. His, if you can't see this, we'll put it up. His leg is insane. <laughs> his leg is the size of mine and Jason's body combined. But so it just showcases. It's, it's disappointing. Brazil are still on this quest to try and make up for the disaster that was the World Cup and their embarrassment to Germany. But again, they're fighting the politics. They're fighting politics of having an Olympics in their own country. An Olympics that shouldn't be there. We'll talk about this in the future, blah, blah, blah. But I would not be surprised if Neymar has been told, you need to stay here for the Olympics because we need to draw fans in to watch you play that's for what, That's what the big lead has, by the way, also, that he's being held on reserve for the Olympics and whether he's going to play, yada, yada. Uh, obviously, Neymar is the player to watch on Brazil if he's playing for Brazil. Yeah. Peru, another tough team. Paulo Guerrero is Peru's main man, played most of his football in Bundesliga. Uh, and he was a joint lone scorer in the Copa Americas in 2011 and 2015. So a man to watch out for there. And this group, I just love uh, the players that are involved in this group. Not Groups. because it's got Javier Hernandez, Luis Suarez, but who's that man for Jamaica? West Jason? Morgan, man. West Morgan! Captain Morgan! Uh, Leicester City's saviour, Leicester City's captain. Can he lead Jamaica to a Leicester S run? Well, I mean, they first of all, they have to get past uh, talented squads in, from Mexico and Uruguay, uh, Uruguay, I should say. But West Morgan, Premier League Team of the Year yeah. selection. Hell of a defender. Older, but had a resurgence later in his career. 32, yeah. Uh, if he can take that form in and anchor the back four, sure. Why not? Why can't you make it come out of the group? But he's going to have a t hell of a task dealing with one player I'm significant. And I'm not... I don't, I'm kind of disappointed that the big lead have talked about, oh, he may bite someone, he might do this, it might be, like, controversial. Yes, we know that's part of Suarez's life and a part of his thing when he puts on the Uruguay shirt, but the bottom line is he's the best player in this tournament. But he's maybe close. In current form, I made the case that Luis Suarez is the best player in the world. But either way, he's undoubtedly the player to watch in this group and one of the, the most important players to watch in the tournament. Phenomenal striker. He has the ability to transcend Uruguay from a good team to a world-class team. That's simply put. Uruguay without Luis Suarez are not a world-class team and nowhere near competitive with Argentina uh, or uh, Chile or any of the other bigger teams in this competition. With Luis Suarez, they are undoubtedly a favourite to go, I would say, to the final, if not the semis. Above him is another player that takes a team to the next level. He is going to elevate Chicharito. Mexico, and that's Chicharito Hernandez. He had 26 goals and 37 appearances for Bayer Leverkusen, resurgence uh, in Germany, and he has the ability to transcend Mexico as well because they're a hard-working team. And by the way, this is a good point that I wanted to move forward with and ask your audience, ask the audience what you think. People are saying, is this not just as much as a Mexico's home tournament as it is for the U.S. Well, because of the huge fan base they have? Well, there? I was going to put it this way. Uh, when they play in California, uh, the showing from We're Mexico going. versus the United States uh, is pathetic from the U.S.'s end and tremendous from Mexico's end. We were at the U.S. versus Mexico uh, friendly. It was 95% Mexico fans. It was 4%. U.S. men's national team fans, and then 1% innocent bystanders who I'm not sure knew what they were doing there. <laughs> Some, of them weren't even the Some of them weren't even facing the pitch. So I can tell you, if you're playing in Southern California and you're playing places in Texas, which I think they're hosting some of the, tour uh, the games, of the, the matches of the tournament too, that's not a U.S. home game. That's a Mexico home game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that crowd gets behind them and pushes them forward. Every and chance then, to go far in the tournament. And then finally, there's a couple of players. I mean, I would say one. Well, you don't have to players. just choose Messi from Argentina, but like as the big lead puts it, we don't need to discuss it. It's been discussed 400,000 times. I'm actually more concerned with Chile because I think that's not the easiest group for them to get. I mean, I think they're better than Panama and Bolivia, but uh, Argentina is obviously going to come out of that group. You would think that that would be a giant well, disaster for their national team. But Alexis Sanchez in Chile played phenomenal in last year's uh, Copa America. The world. And Arturo Vidal should be returning to the team as well, which is great for them because he's the other player, I would say. I'd say even maybe more important than Alexis Sanchez I agree with in Chile. You. I agree with you. He he's, is more, a, uh, he's the engine. More he's dangerous a, in the midfield. Yeah, he's, he, uh, Arturo Vidal's form for Chile 
almost peaks his form for Bayern Munich. I think it does. I mean, at Juventus, oh, wow. I still think Vidal was oh, top five best good. midfielders in the world. Um, I don't think he's hit that height yet at Bayern Munich, but I'm not one to jump on his back with only being there for a season. Not everyone can do the Luis Suarez. Yeah, you might cut in. yourself on his mohawk if you yes, did. Yes, exactly. And that is what you're going to see with Chile is some dodgy haircuts, some hard-working football, some harsh tackles, they have some dirty the, plays. They have the best haircuts But, ever. yeah, they, they all get... I can just imagine that they just get in a room and they get so built up in their own testosterone because they look like that guy that goes to the gym that just works out way, his arms way too much, always tatted up with his hair all shaved, but you don't want to mess with them. And that's what... Chile looks like. I mean, Vidal, <laughs> Vidal at the back, they're all bruisers, man. They get stuck in. They hunt for that ball. They're a team uh, that, that hunt in packs and they're frustrating to play against. And it's going to be interesting to see what was the, the, the Copa America final last year, face off against each other in the group stage with Argentina and Chile. And that will kind of set precedence for how that tournament may go. My favourites, I'm going with the Argentines this year. Are you? Yeah. You think they're going to get over, like uh, Messi will get over the hump and win I think, a and win I think they're going to win Copa America this year. I think that uh, they're taking it serious. They're not leaving Messi uh, out to, to recover. They're not leaving uh, a lot of their star players out. They're coming in to win this tournament. Messi with the Di Maria is a different dynamic. They play very well together in the Argentinian jerseys. Not to mention the talent <laughs> that they have on show. They will be a hard, they'll be a hard team to beat. And in Uruguay, and they're extremely tight shirts. Yes. They Everyone, have the there's, tightest... There's going to be a lot of tight shirts. Their shirts are just... It's like, the Puma yeah. shirts. It's uh, like, like, Chile's as well. I think that they I think that they ask to have the tightest shirts. It makes no it. sense. There's no way to... Like, they can't even breathe. It's like they paint it on. We need to get TYT to, spot, to be sponsored by Puma. But anyway, this oh! is just a brief preview for the Cup America. If you think this is all you're getting, then you are wildly wrong because we will have a lot more clips to come your way. We maybe even be at some of the games. Oh, I'm going to be at some of the California. games. I don't know if you're going to join me or not. We're going to be at these games. We're going to get some fan previews. So if you're in California, you are a TYT sports fan, make sure to let us know. Maybe we'll get a brief interview with you outside the stadium. Hit us in the comment section below. Who will win Copa America Centenario? I've got Argentina, Jason's got Chile, but will not count out Uruguay. Get us in the comments at Twitter, Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason with 91. Stay in touch.